You are watching TFI. Greetings, welcome to TFI, where we are back with another speaker from Autodesk University 2019, as we are marking Inventor's 20 year anniversary. And with that in mind, Autodesk have indeed put on a special class track this year for Inventor, commemorating its anniversary. And we are doing a series of interviews with some of the speakers that are hosting classes on Inventor this November at Autodesk University. And today we have Evan Morell from IMI Precision Engineering. Hi Evan, how are you doing? Good, good, how are you? Uh, good mate, good. Right, so the reason why we're doing these videos, just if this is the first one that you're seeing, is to firstly make you aware, if you are heading out over to AU Vegas this year, just to let you know that Evan's class is on, what it is, because you might think to yourself, actually that sounds like something that we've been battling ourselves at work, and I'm going to do looking at that mate. Uh, alternatively, if you're not going to Autodesk University, uh, you can sometimes find these classes recorded afterwards. They don't record all the classes, but some of them are hosted afterwards on the Autodesk University website, and then you can go and check them all out free of charge, along with any materials, handouts, pamphlets, leaflets, files, anything that was accompanying the class will all be hosted on the Autodesk University website after AU is over, done and dusted. Uh, so yes, the class that we are talking about today, if you are heading out to AU and you have your AU app at hand, it is CP322140 is the code and the class is named Single File Kids, Building Adaptive Assemblies in Inventor. And that class is held on Wednesday, uh, which is, that's another good day actually, uh, November 20th, 9.15am to 10.15am. So this is all about adaptivity in Autodesk Inventor, which I happen to know is a hot topic for a lot of people and it's one of the more powerful areas of Autodesk Inventor. So it's good to know about this stuff without a shadow of a doubt. It can make you look like a genius if you know all about adaptivity. So that's worth keeping in your back pocket. So speaker today is Evan Morell from IMI Precision Engineering. Uh, Evan's based in Connecticut. He has just over three years at IMI. Uh, so Evan, can you give us an overview of who IMI are, what products and services are they uh, are they into, what are they all about, and what do you do within IMI? Sure. So IMI Precision Engineering is one of three divisions of the IMI Global Network. Uh, precision Engineering deals mostly with uh, fluidics. So we do pinch valves, solenoid valves, uh, actuation, and uh, pumps. So at Farmington, Connecticut, my facility, uh, we specialize in round body solenoid valves as well as uh, integrated manifold solution, custom manifolding. And most of our market is in the life science when it comes to the manifold side of things. And then industrial automation, rail, automotive, food and beverage for the round body solenoid side of things. Uh, and of course we integrate those back and forth. And then we do a lot of work with our sister site in Switzerland who does the microfluidic small solenoid valve. Um, so most of my design work is based around custom manifold solutions for customers on an application to application basis. So I will basically take a customer's application, see what specifications they're working with, uh, what kind of temperature ranges, what kind of media, stuff like that, and basically try to take a wrap nest of tubing and turn it into a small, compact, uh, less flow inducive environment in a manifold. Uh, and we integrate wherever possible with our sister site solutions as far as valves, pumps, controls, stuff like that. How, so how did you get involved with uh, becoming a power user with Autodesk software? Usually people, they, they get more involved with becoming a power user if they've been involved with that CAD management side of things, but it sounds like you're just working in the design and engineering side of things. So how, how did you get to being at the level that you're at? Right, so my first career job uh, was about 12 years ago and they used Inventor there. Um, and it really was kind of, I had experience in all of the parametric modeling softwares. Uh, I had taken all the courses that my local schools had to offer um, and Inventor was the most intuitive. And I lucked out in that my first career position used Autodesk Inventor. And I come from a machining background. I started at that job as a machinist started school for engineering and just gradually worked my way into the engineering side of things. Um, so because of my background in creating, um, Inventor just really spoke to me and I took to it very easily. Uh, and it was never a situation where I was just using Inventor as a means to an end. I was using Inventor to design things start to finish and it was part of the passion of designing and Inventor really uh, lends itself well to that kind of design work. Um, so there was never a situation where I needed to do something and I didn't want to learn how to do it with Inventor because I knew it was possible 
Uh, and so I guess my natural progression through the, the learning and knowledge of Inventor just kind of scaled up as my career moved forward. Awesome. So this is your first time as a speaker at Autodesk University. Uh, mine was last year, so I know exactly what you're going through. What, what made you want to <laughs> sort of take that step and, and host a class at AU? So uh, this will be my, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, a, that's a huge deciding factor. Um, this will be my third time attending AU. Uh, I've gone the previous two years before this. And uh, since my first AU, it's just been something to look forward to ever since. Um, I lucked out in that my uh, place of employment decided that it was worth it to send me um, and I have been talking them into it ever since. <laughs> so the first time I went to AU, I was really blown away by the scale of it for one. It's a really, really large event um, and it's really just not what I expected. I didn't expect to go in and have it be such a community more so than an expo. And it really is just a, a day full of learning, a day full of networking. And then at night, it's a day full of fun. It, it really is just the all-inclusive experience at AU, and I wanted to be a part of it. Um, I've learned a lot through all of the, the offerings at AU, and it really isn't one specific thing. It's, you take five classes in the daytime, and you take a little piece away from every one of those five classes. And it, it's not a tremendous investment when you think about everything that you're taking away from it, and I wanted to be able to give back to the AU community. I think you touched a little bit on this earlier uh, during your, your explanation on your history, but how, how long have you been using the Inventor product line for? And, and is there any other Autodesk products that you dabble with? Yeah, so it's been about 12 years um, with Inventor experience. Um, and in that time, it's been a little bit of hiatus going back and forth between modeling programs. There was probably two years where I was a SolidWorks user, but I would Moonlight as an Autodesk user. Um, when, when nobody was looking. I made sure that every every program was installed. So when nobody was looking, <laughs> I would import where I could. Um, I don't deal too, too much with any other programs. I do handle a lot of the plugins that come with Inventor. So a lot of the uh, simulation softwares, uh, I'm getting more into those and prepping my models for simulation in Inventor and then converting over or transferring the files over. Um, but even just the built-in simulation plugins for Inventor have been really well off for us so far. Uh, I noticed on your LinkedIn that you're a, you're also a, an Inventor certified professional. Is that something that you've found has actually benefited you in any way other than it being kind of like a personal validation? Is it something that's helped you in your career in, in any way? It's a, a little bit of both. I, I like to set goals for myself and achieve them. So that was definitely something that I wanted to tick off my checkbox. Um, but it definitely opens people up in my workplace to ask me things and learn new things about Inventor. Uh, I think before that, everybody models a little bit differently. There's no right way to do a model. There's a lot of wrong ways that you find as you learn. Um, but I think just having the certification on the wall really opens people up to accepting that they're okay to ask a question to somebody that has a history and a background. In. Do you, so do you use the, the free certification exam opportunity over at AU to sit the test, or is it something that you do in and around where you live? That was I, my first year at AU, I got the certification. Yeah, you're you planning on doing it again this year because mine's up. Mine's up for renewal. It's a three-year cycle. Mine's up this year, so I'm... I, I think I might just bang it out while I'm there. Yeah, I reckon so as well. Right, so on, on your class, Evan. So just as a recap, the class is Building Adaptive Assemblies in Inventor, Wednesday, November 20th, 9.15 to 10.15 a.m. The learning objectives that Evan's sought out for the class is to utilize adaptive modeling to create assemblies of multiple components made from scratch all in a single file. Use adaptive parameters to allow changes in a component to flow through the assembly seamlessly and organize a model tree in a way to make editing easier in the future for other users and learn best practices for modeling and orders of operations. So I'm personally always curious why someone picks a specific niche to, to kind of focus in on and go in on detail. So within IMI, do you guys have like a specific use case internally which advantageously leverages adapt that's why well, they're three long words advantageously leverages adaptivity <laughs> to a to a measurable extent which is led on you wanting to champion adaptivity to the point of doing a class on it so like has it been a massive benefit for you guys internally i i won't say that it's a complete and utter need for us to use it i just find it that it simplifies the process exponentially um so we deal a lot with assemblies that focus themselves around a central part or a central component of the assembly. And for me, the best way to tackle that assembly, if I'm going to be 
um, trying to model around a certain part is to keep that part as a reference and just build around it as need be rather than have several different files open and switch back and forth just to check out what dimensions are what. I, yeah, cause I, was, I noticed in one of the, the learning objectives that it said that it's uh, adaptivity from the, the, the standpoint of a single file. Uh, right. Components made from scratch all in a single file. So I was wondering if there was any kind of multi-body modeling context around that, or is this mostly sort of a skeletal modeling approach? Yeah, so it's more of the skeleton modeling approach. Adaptivity is a, is a buzzword for a lot of people. And I know when some people hear it, they think, oh, I want my spring to move and I want you know my, my brackets to get longer. And that's definitely a part of it. Uh, for me, how I tend to utilize it is if I need two things to line up perfectly, I want to reference them to each other. So that if I change one down the line, I know that the other one is changing as well. And they're keeping that relationship rather than finding out a month down the road when the drawings are printed and machinist goes to make it that those holes don't line up anymore. Yeah. Yeah, skeletal modeling is, it's something that I see quite a bit across the comments of a lot of the videos that I do. It's like, can, can you show more about this? Can you show more about skeletal modeling? It's something that I think it's, it's obviously not very well known what it is and how to actually go about doing it. So if anyone is interested in that, then I guess this class is absolutely perfect. Uh, you also mentioned that that it's going to be making things easier for other users. You're going to, I guess, give some tips and tricks around how, how that's uh, going to be possible. What are the kind of issues that people face if adaptivity isn't done right and what trips people up with it? So adaptivity, as most users that are familiar with it know, can be turned toggled on and off. Um, and in most cases, when you're done with an adaptive assembly, you're going to want to toggle it off so that you don't, if you're using a component in more than one assembly, you don't want it to keep a relationship with one of those several assemblies because you change one thing and it no longer works in the others. Um, but for the most part, there's a lot of situations where you can create an adaptive part um, to ensure that you keep a relationship between components and say you update one down the road, uh, you're not so worried about your model exploding uh, without you knowing it by changing one component rather than opening the entire assembly and changing multiple components. On its own uh, that, that's one of the issues that, that I personally had within within my place uh, to the point where before I even joined the company there was like a blanket rule adaptivity is banned just right. outright banned because it, it, it's quite a it's quite a large office there's a lot of staff there there's a lot of turnover people come people go and not everyone understands what it is so people are building adaptivity into their designs and then people are coming who don't understand what it is and it's quite difficult to have like a common level of knowledge across everyone so everyone understands what the people have done so um, yeah, any any tips that can be handed out, which make it easier for, for help than other users, would be definitely worthwhile seeing if you if you are over at AU. Uh, at the end of it all, what what are you what are you mostly hoping that people take away from your class? What's like the the, the, the wider message that you're hoping to portray? My, in my experience at AU, there are a thousand wonderful classes that you can take. The ones that I've taken the most away from are the things that seem the most simple on the cover. Um, all of the advanced classes are great if you're at that level. Uh, there are some instances where I've walked into those advanced classes feeling like an advanced user and walked out feeling like I've never opened the program. So I wanted to present a class that somebody that just opened Inventor for the first time could take information away from and change the way that they model things. Um, and I think that's a, an approach that I've always appreciated at AU when I go. Uh, and I, I really hope to be able to provide that to other users. Yeah, that, that was going to be my next question was like, with what level of, of user are you aiming this at? Is it more for the, the experienced users or is it for beginners? I guess you answered that there. It's more, you're trying to cater for pretty much everyone at every level, really. Right. It's really a broad spectrum because, like you said, there's a lot of people that have been modeling for years and years and have no idea what skeletal modeling is. They don't know the approach. They've never you know, known that you can create parts within assembly files without having to start a new part file separately. I remember last year when I was doing my class uh, for the first time, I would imagine it's quite the same for you. It was just tunnel vision focusing on your class. Everything else just doesn't matter. Leave me alone. I need to get my class done. Major panic mode. But have you had a chance to think about anything else that's going on over at AU? And is, is there anything that you've seen that you personally want to go and see and attend whilst you're over there? Anything that stood out for you? I definitely set my schedule first. As soon as I found out when my class was, I built my schedule around it. I uh, gave myself some wiggle room uh, between my class and the others, but I definitely wanted to be sure that I made the most out of my trip to AU again, um, because all in all, it's just such a great experience. I wouldn't want to go so focused on my own class that I didn't take away from everything else that everybody else had to offer. 
Um, and, and quite honestly, what I'm most excited about is just being in the community again and feeling that, you know, uh, passion that everybody has for their career paths and their design work and their, you know, industries. It really is a community as if I've never experienced before. It, it is. That, that's exactly what I took out of it the first. I've been twice before the, in the thing that struck me the most of it was first firstly it was Vegas because I'm from England and Vegas is just just mental absolutely <laughs> off the wall mental as a box of frogs uh, but after that it was just being in a because in my, in my world I don't know what it's like for anyone else but in my world I'm just this nerd who does this weird oh that's Neil over there he does computers they don't, they don't really know what you do it's like I don't know it's 3D card or 3D what so but going over to AU you're in, it's the one time you're in an environment where everyone just gets it and you right. can talk to everyone and they understand and that's it's it's a strange thing to try and explain to someone else but it's it's just an amazing place to be not only have you got other people who do a similar thing to you but all of the guys who are responsible for the software that we use and who have some kind of say in making better the tools that we use to make our lives better when we're at work they're all there so it's and then yeah, there's the networking. There's, there's everything about. It. It's just a, it's just a, it's amazing. I love it. So right, that's that's pretty much the extent of my questions there. Evan, is there anything else that you wanted to add at the end? Anything else that uh, you think? In no, I, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to speak to you and, and give people a general idea of what I'm trying to offer. And I really look forward to going back to Vegas and seeing you all there. I've got a lot of seats to fill. Sign up that class. <laughs> all right. Thanks very much, Evan. Cheers. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys.